word of admonition. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, direct your attention. I'm not here to be an evangelist. Praise God. But to minister to you, I feel like the Lord gave me this last week. Remember I told you I had uh, something to preach? I felt like I was going to preach about the sons of Abraham. Remember me telling you that? Okay, and I never did preach it. <clears throat> and, I, and the Lord had given me what I did preach that morning just as I stepped out of the shower, I believe it was what I told you, you know. And I had to scurry. I had a little bit late for the church because I had to scurry getting my scriptures popped up where I could. If I take all the time to turn to them in the Bible, well, uh, it takes more time, and I, don't, I get more in by printing them out on the paper. Amen. So that's what I do that for. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> amen. I had this, and I, even though I had it, I didn't have a clear path to it. I don't know if you can understand what I'm saying. Uh, I had the, the, the scriptures, what he laid upon my heart, but I feel like the Lord this evening, uh, or this earlier, he helped me to, to understand the, the depth of what I was going to be talking about in this scripture. So <clears throat> I had to shuffle things around a little bit. Amen. But uh, I, 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 I believe if you'll pray for me, the Lord will help me tell you what I need to tell you. Amen. But it's a word of admonition to you, a word to admonish you, a word to, I don't know exactly why the Lord gave me this. <laughs> Praise God. But I guess that's his business. My business is, is try to preach it. Amen. Praise God. So we'll look at the gospel of Mark, chapter number 10. <clears throat> And we're going to begin reading at verse number 17, 10 verses through here, and then two verses in Luke chapter 19. But Mark chapter 10 and verse number 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may ha inherit eternal life? He's wanting eternal life, isn't he? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. He gives them the Ten Commandments here. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these things have I observed from my youth. <clears throat> then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. And said unto him, One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he, and he was sad at that saying. And he went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? Everybody say, trust in riches. How hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure. Open your mouth and go. <gasps> you got to do this. <sighs> oh, come on. Humble yourself. <laughs> they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked upon them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 and 2, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named... Na Zacchaeus, 
which was of the which was the chief among the publicans. Everybody say, and he was rich. He was rich. Amen. Lord Jesus, I don't know how to preach. If you don't help me, Jesus. Ask for your grace tonight. Help me to minister the word of the Lord. Great God, let us be hearers and doers of the word and retain your word. Praise God. Help us, Lord, live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Praise God. We're going to leave Zacchaeus for a little bit. I don't know if I said his name right. That's the way I call him. Praise God. Zacchaeus. Amen. Praise God. He was rich. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. Verse number 24 of Mark 10. And the disciples were astonished at his words, at Jesus' word. But Jesus answered again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Amen. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Praise God. There's a lot of things that are dangerous to your soul. Did you know that? There's a lot of things that are dangerous that the Bible warns about. Amen. And wealth is one of those things, oftentimes, that causes men to fall from God and to never be what they need to become with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 23, verses 4 and 5, the scripture admonishes us. It says, labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Praise God. Anybody ever found that out to be? <laughs> Praise God. So he says, you know, labor not to be rich. I'm not preaching tonight that it's wrong to be wealthy. I'm not preaching that tonight. I hope that by the time I get through that you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I don't have this in my notes, but Psalms chapter uh, 62nd Psalm, rather, verse number 10 it tells us, trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. If riches increase, amen, something very, very important, amen, which a lot of people fail to do. A lot of people set their heart upon their riches. Can I tell you, that's exactly what was wrong with the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. I don't know if you recognized it as we read, but the Bible talks about that he came to Jesus and Jesus told him what he needed to do to have eternal life, keep the commandments, which at that time there was the Mosaic Law. It was before uh, the day of Pentecost when the church started and before Jesus had shed his blood. At that time, amen, that's what he needed to do. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible says that Jesus loved him. When he told the Lord, he said, Lord, I've observed all these things from my youth. Jesus loved him. He loves people that's trying to do what's right. Amen. He does. Amen. Praise God. But the problem that Jesus knew that he had, amen, was that he had set his heart upon his riches. And so Jesus asked him for them. <laughs> Praise God. There's a lot of people set their hearts on a lot of things. Amen. 
Don't be surprised if Jesus asked you for it. He asked uh, Abraham for Isaac. And he loved him dearly. Abraham was willing to give it to him. And the Lord said, oh, no. I just wanted to, I wanted to see if you'd do it. <laughs> Praise God. I wonder what would have happened, how the story might have changed if the rich young ruler said, yes, Lord. It's all given to the poor. I'm going to take up my cross and follow you. We don't know what that story was, but we know that he walked away. He was grieved by what Jesus asked him to do. Amen. Praise God. It's a big mistake. Many make the mistake of trusting in uncertain riches. Amen. Luke chapter number 12 and verses 16 through 21. Jesus speaking here, he said, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And listen to him here. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he, listen to this, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Amen. Oh, praise God. You know what? I look at this here and I think about one big mistake that I see that this man made. So many people make it. Uh, 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 the same type of a mistake. Amen. He said to his soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Praise God. Can I tell you, your soul is not concerned about money. Your soul wants to be right with God. He failed to realize the difference in his soul and his lust of his flesh. It was the lust of his flesh that was desiring stuff besides a walk with God. His soul wanted to be right with God. Your soul wants to be right with God. Amen. It wants it more than it wants riches. Amen. It wants it more than it wants fame. It wants it more than it wants popularity. Your soul wants to be right with its maker. Amen. Amen. That's your soul wants to be right with God. He made a terrible mistake. Amen. And it cost him. Amen. He laid up treasures for himself on the earth. And he failed to be rich with God. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Several verses here. 6 through 19. That's a lot of scriptures tonight. I know it is, but... Bear with me. I felt like the Lord wanted me to minister this. Paul to Timothy. He says, but godliness. Oh, godliness is important with God. He really likes godliness. You know why? Because he's godly. Amen. Godlikeness. I said godlikeness. I said godlikeness. Amen. Godliness with contentment is great. Gain. You see, it's not how much you have. Amen. It's how close you are to God. Amen. Godliness with contentment is great gain. You may not have a lot in the bank, but if you've got a godly life and you're committed to God, I want you to know you're treading uh, quite a ways down the road. Amen. You're making some progress. It's great gain. Amen. Praise God. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, that's the necessities, folks. Amen. Even a house is not a necessity. Oh, praise God. I think about this so often. I'm glad to have a house. Amen. But food and raiment, amen, is necessities. Amen. Did you know that? Praise God. A car is not a necessity. 
You think it is. A telephone's not a necessity. You think it is. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad to have a car. But I want you to know something. All the electricity and the indoor plumbing, which I'm very grateful for. Amen. A shelter over my head. I'm so grateful and I thank God so often for it. But all of those things are, uh, are things that God has just added. Amen. It's not necessity. It's not the bare necessities. It's all the extras. Isn't God good? Clap your hands to Jesus. Because he's been good to you. He don't owe you none of those things. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Oh, praise God. We ought to not be grumbling about anything. Come on. We got food and raiment. Come on. We're all fat here tonight. Most of us are. <laughs> Some of you are thin to win. Amen. Pray God bless you for that, that, that blessing. Amen. But this preacher's not thin. <laughs> praise God. If anything, I need to lose some. Amen. Thank you. for. I know it, brother. You don't have to rub it in. Praise God. <laughs> uh, Praise God. Amen. So the Bible's telling me, praise God, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Amen. Money causes you a lot of problems. For the love of money. Not money. Not money. I'm not preaching against money. It's the love of money. Amen. What you love, you embrace. If you love money, you're going to embrace money. You're going to embrace it so much, you're not going to show up to church a lot of times. Oh, come on. You don't have to be out getting drunk. Come on to miss church. You can have love. I got to get more. I got to have more. I ain't got time to go to the house of God because I got to go make some more. You're just as bad as a drunk or a drug dealer. Amen. Come on, listen to me. What you love, you embrace. I love Jesus, so I'm going to be here. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be drawn near to the Lord because what you love, you embrace. Hallelujah. And it's the love of money. It is the root of all evil. Amen. The prostitute doesn't have sexual relations because she's just wanting a relationship. Amen. She has it to get some money. The drug dealers selling the drugs, risking their very lives that they can get some money. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care about the lives that will be lost if they can just get that money. Amen. Amen. Those guys going up robbing the banks. Risking their lives, they want that money. Amen. Something's wrong with their contentment. Amen. Something's wrong. They're not content with food and raiment. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. I want to love the Lord more than I love anything. Amen. I want to love him more than I want to love money or popularity or whatever it is. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. Don't blame me. Blame him. Praise God. The love of money. It is the root. You know, roots are not often seen. You don't see roots. They're out of sight. And then, if you look at the evil and ponder and think about what, why is that happening? Why are they doing that? Why are they acting like that? Why are they killing those people? Or why are they doing this or that? Why is this war started? Why is that war started? Amen. Praise God. How many wars have been started over oil? Lots of them. Amen. The root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. It didn't say, again, that money itself was evil. In fact, the Bible says money answers all things under the sun. You need it to operate on. Praise God. Not, I'm not preaching against money. I'm preaching against loving it. I'm preaching about not loving it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Don't love money. Don't set your heart upon it. Money is something, listen to me, that God has given us to use, but he hadn't given it to us that it controls us. Oh, praise God. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, I hope I don't make nobody a sluggard here tonight by misunderstanding what I'm saying. You men need to get a job. You need to take care of your families. You need to earn a living and take care of them. 
Praise God, I'm not preaching against that. I'm preaching about loving money. Amen. Oh, praise God. We need to work. We need to do those things. We need to provide for our families. Amen. We need to pay our tithes to the kingdom of God. Amen. We need all those things. Praise God, but we don't need to let it control us. We don't need to set our heart upon it. We don't need to lay our heart upon it because it'll take wings and it'll fly away and it'll leave you laying in the dust. But God will never do that to you. God will never do that to you. Praise God. Amen. I don't want to be like the man that said, Oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to tear down these barns and I'm going to build bigger ones and I'm going to bestow all my goods. I'm going to say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much laid up for many years. But then, how would I know what day that the Lord's going to say, Hey, it's time to come home? It's time to come home. What are you going to do with it then? Amen. Love of money is the root of all evil while one, some have coveted after. They have done what? They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, can I say, thou, O woman of God, whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, thou, O man of God, flee these things. Come on, we preach against fleeing fornication. Amen. That means, listen to me, run away from it. I'm not talking about running away from having a job and taking care of things and taking care of needs. I'm talking about running away from covetousness. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Some covet after this. Amen. And they err from the faith and they pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But, oh, man of God, flee these things. Amen. If you're going to follow something, follow after righteousness godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Remember what that rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, what shall I do that I might have eternal life? I want you to know, praise God, lay hold on these things. Amen, praise God. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Where unto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Amen. So Paul tells Timothy he to admonish the rich. Praise God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Y'all getting quiet on me. I must have touched on some things. Oh, come on. I must have touched on some things. Did I touch on some things? Woo! He's trying to step on my toes. I'm not trying to step on your toes. I'm just trying to preach what the good Lord wanted me to preach. Amen. I'm not trying to step. If you'll let it do a work in you, listen to me, it'll draw you closer to the Lord and farther away from the world. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody going to get with me? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. America lacks money. America lacks wealth. America lacks riches. But Jesus is coming. And it's time that we be not wrapped up in all of that stuff. We need to be wrapped up in Jesus. Amen. I said we need to be wrapped up in living godly. In living righteously. Oh, praise God. So Paul admonishes Timothy to tell the rich. The rich Christians. My goodness. Amen. I think about it. I listen to talk radio sometimes. And it talks about all these political things and stuff. But I, I wonder sometimes. It talks about all these billions, millions, billions of dollars that people have. And they're giving it to this. And they're giving it to that. And I think, oh, my Amen. How we could build a big church if people would just get their direction right. Amen. How many churches could be started if people would get their minds and their hearts on Jesus. Amen. Praise God. How much is floating around and going to the devil's work and to the place that it really needs to be. And that's sending missionaries out to reach lost souls. Amen. Start new church works. Amen. Where there is none. Amen. Praise God. But you know what? Jesus doesn't need all that stuff. He doesn't have to have it. It's just a tool that can be used. That's the way it needs to be looked at in our lives. Amen. It's a tool that can be used. Praise God. Amen. It's just something in our hands. Praise God. 
1 Timothy 6, 17, Paul charges them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust. Here's that trust. Amen. Jesus said, how hardly shall those that trust in riches, how hardly shall they enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. So Paul admonishes them here. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us all richly all things to the enjoy. Isn't he good to you? Come on. You got a lot of extras. And God gave you those things so you could enjoy them, but not so they can control you. Praise God. It says that they do good. What are rich people supposed to do? If you're loaded with gold, what are you supposed to do? That they do good. That they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. Oh, praise God. Do you know if God loads people with money, they have a responsibility to help those that are struggling? Praise God. I'm not saying, praise God, you don't have to go buy me one of those nice Z71s like Brother McClendon's got back there. My old Z71, I don't know that I would trade him. I love my old Z71. My kids got together and bought that for me. I love that old thing. Amen. It's an old work truck, but I love it. I'm thankful for it. But because I don't have a truck as pretty as Brother Dwayne's doesn't mean that he has to go out and buy me one. That's not what we're talking about. I got food. I got raiment. Praise God. I shouldn't be covetous of he, what he has. In fact, I should want my brother to prosper and be in health even as his soul prospers. And I do. I want every one of you to do great. I want every one of you to prosper and to do good and have bounty and have plenty. But don't forget, when God gives it to you, you better be mindful of those that are less fortunate. Oh, praise God. He didn't give it to you to hoard up, to stack up, to build bigger barns. He gave it to you to further the kingdom of God, to help your poor brother. Amen. If he trusted you with it, you need to do things with it that Jesus would do with it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the goodness of God. It tells you to do that. Do good. That they be rich in good works, the rich. Ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. Praise God, I looked that word communicate up. Strong says it means liberal. Now, I don't believe God wants any of you in here being liberals. <laughs> Political liberals. Amen, because they're pushing gay rights and gay agendas and all that kind of stuff, and we don't believe in none of that. But the word liberal means don't be uh, tight. Don't be hoarding things. Amen. Amen. But look out beyond yourself and see that there's other people that have needs in their lives. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you've got to fulfill their every want, but there's people that have needs. Amen. There's people in America, amen, that have plenty. Amen. amen. But there's places, folks, where people are in poverty. Yes. Praise God. There's people that are in poverty. Praise God. I'm sure God will bring somebody your way. There'll be somebody come your way. Amen. If God has blessed you in abundance, there's going to be somebody that God's going to send your way. And he's going to depend on you giving yourself, letting the love of God be in your heart. And he's going to use you to minister to their needs. Amen. The problem is that we have too often if we want to hold on to it. We want to hold on to it. I'm here to tell you, if you don't give it out, it's going to go somewhere. It'll go somewhere else. But when you give it out with the mind of God, when you give it out, amen, as God directs, I want you to know something. You're laying up treasures on the other side. You can't take it with you. You're only here for a limited amount of days. Oh, praise God. I don't know why preachers scream. I guess we'll get into it. That word, be willing to communicate. It's the words liberal. Amen. Proverbs 11. I don't, I don't have this in my notes, but so Brother Demon may not have it. Praise God. Do you have that, Brother Demon? 
11, verses 24 and 25. I had verses 25, but I thought, oh, 24. I don't have it in my notes either. But I got to thinking about this. There is that scattereth and yet increases. There is that scattereth, scatter it, but yet you get an increase. You get increased. It's like, I threw this out, but look, it's all coming back to me. There is that scattereth, yet increase. And there is that which withholdeth holdeth more than his meat, but it tendeth to poverty. There's people that hoard stuff, amen, and don't dish it out to help somebody else. And they end up coming themselves to poverty. But yet it seems like I've been saving all of this. I've been keeping all this stuff. I just can't seem to get ahead. It's like I'm putting my money into pockets with holes in it. That's basically what it's saying. Now, the next one. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. The liberal. Here's liberal. Not the stingy person. Not the stingy one. But the liberal soul. Praise God. Amen. They're looking someplace to be a blessing to somebody. Come on. They're looking for an opportunity. Praise God. Did it ever cross your mind when you're pulling up to that fast food joint? Amen. And you got a $20 bill and your meal is $5, is $15. Did it ever cross your mind? That little old waitress that's making minimum wage, trying to make a living for her family, to give them that other $5 and say, hey, well, I want to be a blessing to you. I want to give you this. This may not make every, your next bill, but oh, I want to be a liberal soul. I want to be scattering and yet have it come back to me. Amen. The liberal soul shall be made fat. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. That's what the Bible says. I said that's what the Bible says. Oh, rich young ruler, what would have happened to you if you would have been mindful of the poor? Luke 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man. Everybody said rich man. Which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Which was laid at this gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Not to get a table and eat, just eat the crumbs. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. He had dogs for doctors. And it came to pass. Where was this guy at? He laid at the rich man's gate, verse 20. Full of sores. It came to pass that the beggar died. He ended up dying. And was carried by the angels. Where did he go? He went to Abraham's bosom. You know what that means? That was figurative speech. Abraham was known as the father of faith. He was known as the father of faith. And this man actually saw this. But it was figurative that the beggar, even though he had it terribly bad, and dogs were his doctors, and he laid outside the gate of somebody that could have helped him but didn't, he died. But he was still a child of faith. <laughs> It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth, who did he see? Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. Amen. And he cried out and said, what did he call him? Huh? You know what he was doing? I'm a child of faith. I'm a child of Father Abraham. I'm your child too. Father Abraham, have mercy 
on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receivest the good, thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence uh, to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses. They got a preacher to preach to him, in other words. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. Praise God. Father Abraham. Amen. Lazarus ended up in Abraham's bosom because regardless of what he went through, amen, he stayed faithful to God. He may not have had anything in this world, but he had riches with God. Amen. His treasures were not on this side. They were on the other side. It looked bad. It looked like if anybody was God forsaken, it was him. But the truth of the matter, it was the rich man that was in trouble with God. And he claimed to be one of Abraham's. But the problem he had, he didn't have real faith like Abraham. For faith without works is dead being alone. Amen. Abraham's faith was a faith that would have reached out and ministered to his brother that laid outside of his gate. In fact, his brother wouldn't have been outside of that gate. He would have been eating at his table. Amen. And he wouldn't have had dogs for doctors. He would have had physicians to take care of him. Amen. He was a professor, but not a possessor. Yeah. Amen. Oh, praise God. What got a hold to him? Probably his riches. Probably the same thing that the rich young ruler was hung up on. All of his wealth, all of his possessions. You see, though money itself is not evil, the love of money is. The love of money causes you to hoard. Amen. But... The love for God causes you to distribute and be mindful of those that are less fortunate. Let's go back to Zacchaeus. We read Luke 19, 2, and there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans. Everybody say, and he was rich. He was rich. He had money. He had a lot of money. Amen. But something was changing in his life. It was transforming his life. The verse 3 says, Luke 19 verse 3 says, And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus paid attention to me. Guess what? He's paid attention to you too. Oh, that we would have a spirit like Zacchaeus had. Amen. The master's touched my life. He's called my name. How important is it to you? It was so important to Zacchaeus that he was willing to change his entire life. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with the man that is a sinner. Dear Jesus is eating with a tax collector. He didn't mind it at all because he was seeing some man's heart. 
transforming and changing. Oh, hallelujah. He was stingy before. He was probably a cheat before. But now that Jesus has paid attention to him, his heart has made an about face. Things are changing. Amen. I said things are changing. Praise God. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, the Lord didn't even ask him. I said the Lord didn't even ask him this. You see, when you get a change of heart, you don't have to be talked into it. It just comes with getting no heart right. Come on, it just comes with getting no heart right. Come on, when you want to get right with God, when it's more important than anything else in your life, you don't mind what you lose because you know you're going to gain. Amen. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods. He didn't even say all of them. Praise God, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, which they were known for, <laughs> I, refor- I restore him fourfold. Right. Now, you've got to stop and think about this. There may be a reason why he didn't give everything to the poor. But he might have cost him half of what he had cheated people out of. He, he might have figured it up and thought, it's going to fourfold times uh, uh, who all I do wrong. That's going to take half of what I got. I can only give half to the poor. I'm going to have to repay the other half. He may have been in the same place. And then again, it might be that Jesus did not require it of him because he was seeing that he didn't have a problem with it. The rich young ruler had a problem with it. He loved it more than he loved God. You see, the Lord is not afraid of you being rich. He's afraid of money controlling you and being the Lord of your life. That's what he's concerned with. Zacchaeus was rich. He was rich. But now he's changing. Half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I take anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day. Oh, I think Jesus was nearly shouting. This day. Hey, Jesus shouted. He sent the 70 disciples out and let them cast out devils. They come back, return, and the Bible says that they were exuberant, you know. And they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And the Bible says in that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. You look it up. It means he leaped for joy. Hallelujah. The devil, praise God. He was. You ought to get excited about it too. (laughs) This day is salvation come to this house. Listen to me. For as much as he also. Wait a minute. He also. He is a son of Abraham. Why did he call him that? Why did he call him that? Why out of all things did he call him a son of Abraham? Why didn't he call him a son of God? Because the attributes of Abraham were attributed to him by calling him a son of Abraham. In other words, he was like Abraham. He had faith like Abraham. Praise God. Genesis chapter 13 and verse number 2. Through three. It says that Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Amen. Bethel means the house of God. That's what the name of the Bethel means. Unto the place of the altar. Abraham was accustomed to going to the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds 
and tents and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together. You see, the thing that Abraham and Zacchaeus had in common was they were both rich, but they were not stingy. It was not their Lord. It was not their God. They were willing to give it up for God. I'm here to tell you, Abraham did not follow wealth, for Abraham was, uh, had wealth follow him. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1. Amen. The reason Abraham was wealthy was because God was at the forefront of his life. And it shall come to pass, Deuteronomy 28, 1. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. God, what am I trying to say? Abraham didn't follow possessions. Possessions overtook Abraham by obeying God. They never became his Lord. He was always had the Lord as his God. Yes, he was rich. The difference in this man and the rich young ruler is the, who was the Lord. God wasn't just trying to take all of people's money away from them and their wealth and prosperity. He just wanted to be the Lord of their lives. Matthew chapter number 6 verse 24. Jesus said, no man can serve. He didn't say that you couldn't have wealth. He said, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God, and the word interpreted here is wealth. Mammon. You cannot serve God and wealth. You can't have them both being your Lord. Abraham didn't have wealth for his Lord. He was wealthy because it followed him. It overtook him. God blessed him like he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. But don't you ever let your money and your prosperity cause you to get and let it get in front of your walk with God. Let the Lord be your God. Amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought or worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Any of you gotten taller by worrying? And why take you thought or worry for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Take, uh, therefore, take no thought. He's talking about don't worry. Do your best. He's not saying be slothful. Tend to things. Take care of things. But don't live a life of fear and worry. Take no thought saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So what do you got to do? He said, but seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things like Abraham. Amen. All these things shall be added unto you. 
Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Oh, I gotta have a bank full of money to live out my life. I'm, I can't give to that church. I can't give to that missionary. I can't give to that cause. I'm here to tell you, you can hold it back and you'll end up, amen. <laughs> With nothing. Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> oh, you can trust God. Listen to me. I'm not a tithe preaching preacher. Hey, you know, I don't mention it very often, but listen to me. Do you know that tithing is an act of faith? I told the church when I preached down and hit her the other day, I felt like the Lord wanted me to. I'm just gonna, I didn't say it bragging, and I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling it because I think I need to say it. And I think everybody pays their tithes. I, I'm, just, I'm just, okay, I don't know of anybody. Do I check and see who pays tithes? The only ones I check to see if they pay tithes is preachers. If they don't, you tell me. Because I don't want them behind my pulpit if they're robbing God. Right. All preachers must pay their tithes. Everybody must pay their tithes. But they're the ones I check on. I don't want a thief preaching. I don't. I don't know of anybody not paying their tithes. Okay, so, so I don't know nothing. I don't even ask you to. She got on to me before, but not asking to you. You did. Got on to the pastor. You better check. You know the way I figure it? So what? If I know you're not paying. It don't matter about what I think. It matters. You're doing this for God, not me. I'm just here to preach. I preach it. You do it, or you face God with it. But I got in church in 1979. I can't remember all the details before I knew better. But when I got into the church since that time that I found out about tithing, to this day, I have never not paid my tithes. And there were times I had a whole house full of kids, and we were eating beans and rice. Amen. We, Rebecca, look at, I don't know. <laughs> you know why? You know why I never went without paying my tithes? Not even, God is my witness. If I did, if if I ever went without paying my tithes, I don't know it. Not even one time in all those years. And sometimes, listen to me, something else had to be set aside. A bill, something. Because listen to me, I always looked at that as God's money. I'm just carrying it to the church for him. And I wasn't about to take God's money. Amen. I wasn't about to take God's money. Praise God. I'm here to tell you, folks, listen to me. I went through some years and years, years several years. You know, I was struggled. Amen. But you know what? I've had miraculous things happen. I've walked into my house in a strange town. We rented a duplex in a strange town. I, have, I had a house full of kids. We didn't have no groceries. You ask my wife. We went to a church to visit. They didn't even know us. I think we went that first time, or I think it was the first time we went, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. I walked into my house after church. Didn't have no food for my kids. There was three bags of groceries in the middle of my floor. I don't even know how the people got into my house. They probably just crawled through a window. <laughs> Steaks in there, Brother Jason. Steaks in there. Amen. I remember one time. Listen to me. Praise God. Amen. One time at the same time. We were struggling. Didn't have, you know what we had one night for supper? We had onion soup. We boiled some onions just so we'd take water with a little taste to it. And hope the opium would put us to sleep. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, I'm talking about the onions. So we didn't take opium. I guess we did. We did but that's what we had one night. But the next day, some church people showed up not knowing anything about us. And they had groceries for us. They brought them to where we were, found us. And brought groceries to us. I didn't ask for nobody for none of that. Amen. But you know what? Amen. Some, see, the, sometimes, listen to me. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. And whenever there's not enough to go around and you're faithful to God, you're walking by faith that God is going to honor your faith. He's going to take care of everything. He, listen to me. 
He, he's going to take care of you. It's not that you won't ever go through a trial. I have never went hungry. I may not have had steak. Very seldom, in fact. But I have had sustaining food, and my family has had food to sustain. We're spoilt in America, folks. We are. We're spoilt. Praise God doesn't owe me anything. He doesn't owe me nothing. And I owe him everything. But this is what the Lord wants. And I'll quit. I got more I can say. Amen. Zacchaeus, do you, you notice what I'm saying? The Lord did not say, give everything you have to the poor. But to the rich young ruler, he did. The reason why was the spirits that were manifest out of each man. Jesus knew that rich young ruler, that he, he had a problem with money, with possessions. And Zacchaeus did beforehand. But whenever Jesus paid attention to him, his entire life changed. And all of a sudden, all the stuff he had hoarded become worthless to him. And the thing that was important was the master. And that made Jesus so pleased. He, he got what he wanted. Do you understand? Jesus right there received. If the rich young ruler had done the same thing, who knows how the story would have changed, would have been different. But Jesus addressed his problem. Amen. Is Jesus the Lord of our lives? Praise God. Can, can, you know, I just mentioned tithes, and I feel like I always got to justify it. Amen? Because I'm a recipient of tithes. But I don't receive all the tithes. We got 25 missionaries this church supports. Tithe goes to missionaries. I do, of my own choosing, just take a minimal amount. Enough to pay my bills. That's what I take. Amen. I try to do a few side things. So I'm not preaching to you about your tithes to get your money. I'm telling you, it's God's kingdom. It's for God. Amen. The church, as far as I know, is doing okay. We're doing fine. Amen. We've got to pay for that van. <laughs> but that's not why I'm mentioning it. Amen. Praise God. But what I'm saying is, listen to me. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. Don't let wealth be your God. It has snared many lives. Is it wrong to have money, Brother Rather? No, it's not. I hope God blesses every one of you. And he's going to. It's going to overtake you. It's going to overtake you. That's what the scripture said in the Old Testament. Amen. If you keep the commandments of the Lord. See, if you seek first the kingdom of God. Did Jesus say that? And Jesus said, if you keep it first, you'll be tried too. Amen. Praise God. But seek you first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, not your self-righteousness. His righteousness. You don't have to live a life of worry. You don't have to live a life of fear. Amen. Amen. Do any of you go around thinking? I know some of you do. <laughs> Praise God. There's, I hope all of you do. Amen. I'm not talking about just go taking your money around and 